Thank you. Uh, I would like to have to uh, talk about this project. So when I visit uh, July in this year, so I visited the uh, Mamado Kante, and uh, we uh, worked on. We start to work on this project, and then now we have a result. So this is a. Uh, <coughs> Uh, upper bound on the size of obstructions for linear rank with MOS K. And this is uh, related to the algorithmic result, algorithm for computing the linear rank with. Okay. So this talk consists of uh, these uh, indexes. So, firstly, I introduce uh, related problems. Two linear, I will give a linear, two linear ordering problems, and then I will give you what is the path width and then what is the linear rank width. And then we are interested in to determining uh, linear rank width of the graph is at most k or not. But and so, what are the relations with the uh, obstructions and the uh, algorithms? And then in the second phase, I will <coughs> give a I'll give you our main result and then what is the key idea of the, this proof. And then if I have time, so I will talk about the generalization to the, some finite field. Okay, this is uh, one of the linear ordering problems. So uh, I'll give you a graph, G, and you want to find uh, some linear ordering so that uh, when you have uh, ordering x1 to the xn, then for each i element, you have a partition x1 to the xi and the remaining things. Then, uh, so I want to obtain the uh, ordering so that the left hand part always have uh, small boundaries. So here is an example. For instance, if you see the third vertex, then you have uh, one, two, three vertices, and then they have uh, two boundaries. So boundary means that the vertices has an edge on the other parts. And you look at the fourth vertex, then you have uh, three boundaries, and then four boundaries, and so on. So and then. So, so I define the width of this linear, given linear ordering is the, as the maximum over all such values. And then actually pass width of a graph is the minimum width over all these linear orderings of the vertex set of the graph. And then question is that if I, if I fix the K, then is there a polynomial time algorithm to test whether this graph has a path with at most k or not. They in, in f of k times n over some constant time. What does for fixed k mean in this sentence? I mean, k is part of the input, right? Uh, no, I just, uh, I, I, uh, k is not an input, and then I fix a k. So k is part of the algorithm. There's yeah. an algorithm that's different for every k. Uh, no, uh, no, no. There is an algorithm. Then uh, different for different k, uh, different works. Yeah. Uh, so there is a, a universal algorithm. Then when you change the k, then, then this algorithm running time is a change. But the, uh, the part of the n is, uh, uh, does not change. So you see it does not depend on the k, and then only f of k part is changing. But nevertheless, k is part of the input to the algorithm. Uh, yes. Yeah. So what are the norm for the this path with parameter? So PWK is the set of all graphs of pathways and most K. Then well-known result, uh, well result is the path PWK is closed under taking minors. And by the graph minor theorem, which is developed by Robert and Seymour, uh, there exists a finite list of obstructions such that the G is in the G has a path with at most k if and only if G has no minor isomorphic to G i for each 
pi. And also, in the series of the paper on the grep minors project, they also show that if h is fixed, then there always exists a uh, cubic time algorithm to test whether a given graph G has a minor isomorphic to H. So together with these two results, there is an algorithm to test the path with M most K in the F of K times the Q, N of three. But this F of K sort of depends on the number of these obstructions. So if you want to explicitly uh, make this algorithm, then so this dip so this f, f of k uh, uh, should be computed. So, so Lagrange showed that uh, actually he obtained the uh, upper bound of the obstructions, number of obstructions for each k. So what he showed is that for each minor obstruction, sorry, for each minor obstruction g for pass with m most k. So this size is bounded by a 2 to the of k to the fourth. But this is a size of the obstruction. So but the, all of the number of obstruction is bounded by a, a one more tower. So 2 to the 2 to the of k fourth. So you can simply calculate this. So this gives an algorithm for using these obstructions. But actually, before this result, uh, Hans Bodrander and Clark showed that uh, actually there is a constructive linear time algorithm to test it. So, but uh, this algorithm also, the dependency of K is very, very huge. So we are gonna the other problems. So here is a matrix. So, this input is a symmetric or skew symmetric matrix over some finite field or some field. And so you want to find the linear ordering of the indices so that so each partition matrix, large Xi and then V delete Xi has a small rank. You mean the submatrix? Yes, yeah, submatrix. So I didn't define this, but so this row is indexed by this set and then column indexed by this set. So for instance, if you look at the second part, then the row are taken by C and D and the remaining is taken as uh, columns. Then we have uh, this two by four matrix. So, so I just, so I assume that this field is a binary field. So this rank is two. And the next thing is that you, you have a three by three matrix and then here the rank is three and the next is a rank is two. So I ask the same question. So we solve this fixed linear ordering is defined as the maximum among all such values. And the linear rank is of this matrix is the minimum is over all linear orderings of the this index set of M. So here, also for fixed case, so is there a polynomial time algorithm to test so M has a linear rank with M most K or not? So for specific cases, so if you give a graph, so if I define MG as the adjacency matrix of the this graph G over a binary field, then the linear rank with of G is the same as the linear rank with of MG. As a defined as a linear rank is mg. So what do you want? Uh, uh, I want to observe the known result of the linear rank with of graphs. So LRWK is uh, the set of all graphs of linear rank with and most k. Then, so. So before passive k is closed under taking minors, but this set LRWK does not close under taking minors, but it's close under taking in use of graphs. So you remove just some vertices or some notion vertex minors and people minors. But I will define it later. So I just uh, see the what is known result. So 
on have uh, some sequence of result that parallel to the graph minor theorem. So he showed that the <coughs> so he, oh I missed the letter. So he, he showed some record ordering theorem on the graphs of bounded ranks. So this implies that for this set LRWK, so it has a finite list of obstructions so that uh, G has a linear rank with and most K depend on if G has no vertex minor isomorphic to in this list. And also uh, with the Corsair, he showed that for fixed K and H, a graph H, there is a cubic time algorithm to test whether a given graph of rank is the most k has a vertex minor isomorphic to h. Uh, together with this result, so we similarly have uh, for fixed k there is an algorithm to test whether linear rank is the most k in the cubic time. But this here also fk depends on the number of vertex minor obstructions. So I remarked that so actually we only have this algorithm here. So previously so Baudrillard and Clarks have uh, some other constructive algorithm to determine the pathways, but here we only have this algorithm, so we are more interested in the, this number of obstructions. Also, I want to notice, uh, I want to remark that for the induced subgraphs, there are infinitely many obstructions for the linear rank with the most k, even for k is equal to 1. Because uh, all cycles are linear rank with 2, but when you remove uh, some vertex, then you have a pass, and then all passes have a linear rank with 1. So for characterizing this type of result, we need uh, really need uh, vertex minors and people minors. So I, for convenience, I, def I defined the LK, script LK, as the complete set of vertex minor obstructions for LRWK. So my question is that how many graphs are contained in this obstruction set? So recently, Adler and Ferry and Proskowski showed that L1 exactly consists of these three graphs. C5 and then two graphs having six vertices. And then motivated by this work, actually with Um and Zhang, we give a low, we give us some more general constructions which give uh, some set of vertex minor obstructions. And this showed that uh, LK is bounded below by uh, double exponential in K. And then in this paper, we <coughs> address an uh, open problem that uh, how many, uh, what is the upper bound of the, this set LK? So with the Mamado Kante, so we show that actually for each graph in the LK, so this size is uh, bounded by uh, 2 to the 2 to the of K. And this gives the, the this all of the number is bounded by uh, tau, 3 tau of 2 of, of k. So, and I didn't define the vertex minor and people minor yet. So, actually I prove a more stronger than this. So, at this moment, I want to define the vertex minor and pupil minor to go, in, uh, to go to detail. So local complementation is an operation to uh, operate on the vertex, and then you swap the adjacency between the two vertices in the neighborhood of the V. So here, in this graph, V has uh, three neighbors, and then if I local complementation at this vertex, then the adjacency between the every pair is uh, changed. Oh, sorry. Um, and pivot complementation at VW in, uh, in the edge set is defined as the 
operation to swap the adjacency between the every pair in the different sets, three different sets. So if you have uh, these two vertex VW, then actually we can divide the remaining vertex set into the four sets. So one set is uh, vertex vertices only adjacent to V, and then here is a common neighbor of the V and W, and then this is a set of vertices are uh, only adjacent to W. And then I swap the adjacency between the these three sets. And then for technicality, I swap the V and labeling of the V and W. So the interesting thing is that so G P of V W is equal to the G uh, to a local complementation and V and W and V. So so this is a wa reason why I swap the this W and V. So to make this e equality. And so a, H is a vertex minor of G if H can be obtained from G by applying local complementation and vertex deletions. And H is a pivot minor of graph G if H is obtained from G by a sequence of pivot complementations and vertex deletions. So the nice thing is that so this vertex minor and pivot minor uh, does not, in, when I take uh, this vertex minor or pivot minor, the rank width or linear rank width does not increase. So that is the interesting fact. And we can see the, these pivot minor obstructions instead of vertex minor obstructions. Then the note that so if the maximum size of graph in PK is at most n, the maximum then the maximum size of graph in LK is also at most n, because the pivot complementation consists of the three local complementations. So if you have a obstruction, so with respect to vertex minor, then this is also an obstruction for pivot minor. So this gives, so this gives uh, directly this note. Oops. And actually, we mainly show that uh, for each graph in the pivot minor obstructions, I have a same bound. And this directly implies that for uh, obstructions for local com uh, vertex minor also we have a uh, same bound and then the number is also same okay this is um, our main result so uh, for remaining time so I want to give us uh, some main tools and then sketch of the proof so are there some questions so far So, so before going to the our our proof, actually there are some many technicalities and some uh, hard things. But uh, I, I think I it's better to give a proof, brief sketch of the proof for the pathways case, uh, proved by Lagrangra. So we first observe two items, main items, to be developed by Lagrangra. So one is that, so he defines the profiles of uh, linear orderings. So instead of uh, looking the exact linear orderings, he defines some essential information of these linear orderings um, with respect to computing these pathways. So profiles are flexible, so we can subdivide or shrink to make uh, some we allow to something. So profile is uh, one of the key ideas. And the second idea is that he defined uh, some notion of the order. So called the, he called the pseudo minor order. So actually this is a very important thing in here. So I didn't define the, this G and F. Actually, I will define the next slide. So, 
So this is a relaxed minor orders. So if you have a one graph is a minor of the other, then this should follow the, this minor order, this new ordering. And also, if this new, if g prime is and below by g in this ordering, then when you merge the some gra same graph p h with a g and then with a g prime, if g merged with h has a path is at most p plus one, then g prime merged with h is also p plus one and most p plus. One. So this should mine order exactly the tells about some power of the uh, power of the merging. So with respect to this pathways, this means that in in this pseudo mine order, if two graphs are equivalent, then they have the same power to obtain the resulting graph as of the pathways. Uh, and we properly define this pseudo mine order using this process, and this relaxation will be used to bound the, the length of the chains in this order. So in two paper, uh, two pages, I will describe the full proof and uh, very briefly. So here is the definition of S graph. So maybe I should define the before, but so S graph is nothing but uh, you specify the some S vertices as the terminals of the graph. So if you have uh, some graph with these three terminals, then maybe you can split into these two parts where so here is the same terminal and here is the right graph also has a three terminal so as a reverse operation we can sum into the two graphs and then identifying the so each terminals into the then then we can op reversely obtain the this previous graph so <coughs> exactly i define the a pair g and f as a S graph, if f is a function from the one to the s to the vertex set, it's a bijective function. So each one to to the s uh, specify the terminals of the graph. You mean the injective? Or? Ah, yes. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, injective. Yeah. Right. Yes. Sure. And <laughs> some of these two S graphs is defined as the. K H, where K is obtained from the disjoint union of G this G and H um, by identifying F I and then G I, and then H I is uh, assigned as the this identified vertexes. So, exactly same as this picture. So, so what he proved is that. If G is a minor obstruction for the PWP and the number of sides is uh, bigger than some number, then actually you can have a sequence of uh, S graphs, which is uh, so GI FI is uh, strictly minor of the GI plus one FI, I plus one. So basically, this came from some linked linear ordering, but I do not want to define this in here. So the picture is full like this. So if you have a long sequence of the linear ordering, then there are some nice partitions so that the uh, always, so in this cut we have uh, three labels, and in this cut we have uh, three labels, and then I can find uh, the vertex disjoint pass from the here to there. So which implies that this GIFI is minor of this. So, okay, I didn't yet define the minor of the, this terminal graph, S graph. So S graph, so minor notion of S graph is exactly the same as the minor of usual graphs, but you, you didn't allow to remove this uh, terminals. So you didn't allow to contract the uh, edges which have the both guys have uh, labeled, or or if you contract an edge with a uh, one terminal, then the contracted vertex also have a label. So this is a notion of a minor operations on the S graphs. 
and so he defined the S profile as uh, some notion, but uh, mm, I didn't describe the very exactly. But the, when you give a ordering of the vertex set, then actually you can keep some information as uh, some sequence of backs, and some backs have uh, these terminals consecutively, and also keep some number in the remaining things. But uh, I didn't focus on the this uh, S graphs, so I just uh, see the what is uh, defined like this, and then he proved that so. He, uh, he defined it like this. So GF is uh, less than the H of G in this pseudo-minor order if for every this S profile H of G, then there is just some corresponding S profile of GF, so which is dominated by the first one. So dominate means that if you have uh, some vertex in here, uh, labeled vertex in here, then it should appear the upper guys. And the number of the number assigned the bag is uh, less than or equal to the this number. Actually, this exactly uh, describes the power of the merging to the pathways, obtain uh, some graph with the pathways and most something. So this this relates to some notion of the this S graphs. And then the whole, whole proof is uh, like this. So in this ordering, so uh, okay. So maybe I should missing here. Okay, I go before again. Sorry. So in this pseudo minor order, actually follows this minor notion, right? So if if the one graph is minor of the other, then this should follow the, this minor order. So this first step means that uh, if, you, if you graph has a very large, then you have uh, infinitely many, uh, so you have uh, many uh, sequence, a uh, long sequence of these S graphs, which is strictly minor of the other. This means that you have a long chain of the, this pseudo minor order. So because this follows the minor order. But I claim that the maximum length of this chain is bounded. Because the, so the maximum chain is, uh, so for each equivalent class of the, this ordering, so only one graph can be appeared on the, this uh, chain. And actually for each equivalent class, I can extract uh, so one of them as a non-redundant s profiles which is uh, there are no redundant part of the, this profiles. And then actually, the, every non-redundant profile has a small length. So the number of, I just compute the all non-redundant S profiles with, with up to the this length. And then, and then we have uh, only small combinations for each part. So actually, totally, I have uh, this number of the possibilities. And then this is bounded by uh, 2 to the over p3. And then together with the first observation, so, oh, sorry. So here, the c to the p plus 2. So, so here, c is uh, this number. So I put this on the middle, guys. Then. I obtain the this size is bounded by a two to the of p of uh, fourth power. So the, what I want to do is that I want to adapt this idea to the linear rank with. So for linear rank with the terminal is uh, hard to define, but uh, something is developed it before this result. So I want to introduce this S-labeled graphs. S-labeled graphs is that you have a function, you have additional function gamma g from the vertex set to the f of 2 uh, binary field of the S power. 
and so factor of size s. And then you first look at the, this matrix. So this matrix is a binary matrix, uh, five times five. And maybe you can compute the rank of the, this matrix. Then this rank is three because the uh, first row and second row is the same. And if you add a second row and third row, then you have a fifth row, right? So you have uh, three redundant things. And then actually, you can you always can decompose like this. So, y m z uh, z transports, where each y has a consists of a row vectors, which is in the binary field to the three power. And so, so vector of size three. And the for G is uh, so transpose G is uh, consists of the also vectors of size three, which is in the binary field. And this means that if I go to the reverse, then if I have uh, this Y and G transpose matrix, then this can be merging with uh, this matrix M to obtain uh, this core matrix X. So this is exactly defined this summation of the, these two labeled graphs. So actually, this does not de describe the whole picture. So whole picture is looks like this. So you have a graph G, and you have another graph H. So you have uh, five vertices in here. So which is the V1 to the V5. So here, H consists of the W1, W2. And I don't know the, what, what are the edges in the inside, but uh, I know that the edges between these two sets are like this. So for instance, V1 is adjacent W1, and V1 is not adjacent to W3 and so on. And then actually, so this matrix between the G and H can be decomposed into the, this part. And then uh, this means that, so previously we have uh, some edges between them. So this split into two graphs, which is, uh, so V1 is, uh, Assign the vector 1, 0, 0. And for the V2, we assign the vector or 1, 0, 0. And so on and so on. Also, here, same for this graph H. Comma H. Here is a. Uh, actually, if you have uh, some matrix M, then you can uh, reverse the, this splitting operation. So a sum of two s labeled graphs, G gamma G plus M uh, H gamma H is the s labeled, again s labeled graphs, where the, this case obtained from the disjoint union of G and H, such that the labeling of the, this new graph is the same as the gamma G and the gamma H. And for each vertex V in the part G and the W in the part H, they are adjacent if and only if this gamma G V times M times gamma G W transpose is equal to one. The last one is gamma H, right? The ah, yes, sorry, so gamma H. So what is the difference for the linear rank is? So <coughs> firstly, I want to show that the similar statement for the linear rank is. So if G is a pivot minor obstruction for the linear rank is P, LRWP, and the, this size is bigger than some number, then we have a s sequence of uh, S-labeled graphs. 
so that the gi comma gi is a pivot minor of the next one. But uh, this is a picture for the minor. But the, in the minor, it's not so hard because we can find the path from here to there. But here, for the pivot minor, so we need uh, some other type of result. But actually, there is a tough linking theorem proved by the um. So if I use that the uh, uh, variation of the thus linking theorem with respect to people minor, we can obtain this. Um, but the, uh, but similar things we can prove, but the still it's not clear. But uh, but the difficult thing is that uh, how to prove that this G1 comma G1 is a people minor of the G2 comma G2. Also the difficult thing is that what are the pivot minors of the, this S labeled graphs? Because uh, there are little tricky things on the, these pivot minors, so I will explain it. Okay, consider we have uh, two S labeled graphs, G gamma G and H gamma G, gamma H, and the summation of these two graphs by um, some S, S times S matrix M. So I assume that I have uh, some operation on the s labeled graphs. So then the actually what I need is that if I first uh, summation some of these two, taking a sum of these two graphs and then pivoting uh, some edge in the G part, it's the same as that G come first pivot the G part and then summation with H have the same result. So this means that this diagram is commu should commute because this is a, a essential part of the proof of this. But actually you can easily see that if you have a combined graph, then you people some edges in the G part, then you can change some something in the H part, of course, because uh, there are many many edges can be between the G part and the H part. So may change the adjacency in the H part. So it's necessary to keep something to make a change in the H part. So I add uh, some new one more thing, mu g. I call the boundary of this S labeled graphs. So a triple is uh, called the boundary S labeled graph if G gamma G is S labeled graphs and uh, mu G is a subset of the this F2 of S and the F2 times F2 of S. So actually, so the role of the, this mu G is the so when I when I pivot some x, y in the g part, then instead of uh, mem memorize this x and y, the vector assigned in the x and the, for the y. So I will I will memorize the pair of the, this gamma g x and then gamma g y in the mu g. So people comp So I define the people complementation on the this boundary as labeled graphs. And when you take uh, this pivoting on the, this triple, then graph is taken by uh, G pivot x, y. But the mu is the obtained by mu g and symmetric difference with uh, gamma x and gamma y. Uh, so because uh, this is with, with my <coughs> so. If I have a two vertex A and B, and if I have a two vertex C and D, oh, sorry, it's too small, maybe. So if this is A and B and C and D, for instance, this gamma, gamma A and gamma B, and here is gamma C and here is assigned gamma D. If gamma A is equal to gamma C, 
then A and then C have the same neighbors on the, this part when I merge with uh, some matrix M because uh, this adjacency between the this part and this part are only depends on the, this function gamma so if the function so assigned vector is the same then the, they should have the same neighbors on the, this part so if I assume that gamma A is equal to gamma C and gamma B is equal to gamma D then after merging that if I pivot here and then and then pivot here then the same the the this pivoting affects something on here but the this pivoting also have a same affection on the here right so if I uh, take uh, these two operation again then the swapping is uh, again reversed then the nothing is changed so I keep the so when I take uh, pivoting on the left hand side I keep the this information and uh, this symmetric difference is very important because uh, we want to bound the number of the these operations so actually this is uh, bounded by uh, the binary uh, F, uh, binary field of the s time uh, over s and then binary of times the binary field over s and then so gamma g is defined uh, again uh, maybe you remember that when I take a pivoting x and y then the label of x and y are the swap so so there are some reason to the take uh, uh, gamma x as the gamma g y and then gamma y is the gamma g x and then for other vertices we take uh, this matrix so actually this came from the this pip another uh, statement of the another definition of the pivoting so it, it's exactly the same as the uh, pivoting on the graphs which has previously defined so for instance so if we V and W have the uh, same neighbors. Uh, G, are, G and B are the same neighbors of the V and W. Then the, they are not changed between them. Uh, this is described by here because uh, G, Z and B are adjacent to both of them. Then this is a uh, one times one. So we have a minus one. Then also have a my one times one so we have a uh, two minus one so this computing is uh, on the binary field so this is stays as the mg uh, set mb and so on. the if you consider the all possibilities of the this adjacent then you can see that actually this definition is the same as the people's operation on the graph and so this is a uh, taken from here so so, it, so when you see it, it is MGCV is a gamma replaced by a gamma GZ, and this is a gamma GY, and this is replaced by gamma GX. And then, uh, so I don't want to describe the more detailly, but this is a my notion of the, this merging operation. So this is not, not at all symmetric. So left, uh, left hand has a boundary, but the right hand side does not have a boundary. And then when I'm merging these two graphs, so, so I describe in the picture. So here I have a graph G, um, gamma G, and the mu G. And here is the H and gamma G. And then after merging, so inside you take the uh, same graph in the G, and then between them, we take uh, exactly this vector gamma g v times uh, 
times m times com h w transpose for each v in the g part and then w in the h part. But the technical thing is the last one. So in the in the mu g, actually I keep the all affections from the left hand side to the right hand side when the people think. So for each pair, so v11, so I assume that mu g is the v11, v12, and v21, v22, and so on. Then for each i, I will define the c v i j as a function from the v h to f2 that maps the for each vertex is assigned to the this vector. So this so this vector actually assigns that uh, when I when I uh, have uh, some vertex assigned by this vector, then if if this is equal to one, then this vertex should adjacent to y. Um, so maybe I can say again. So if I have a uh, two vertex in here, so he vertex is like like x and y. So maybe gamma x uh, is uh, here is assigned gamma x and then gamma y. And so pair is like this gamma x, comma gamma y. So mu is a set of some pairs of like this. And that's C. C comma X is a function from the uh, function from the V V H to the F2. But this F2 exactly so one say uh, this vertex is adjacent to some vertex which is uh, labeled by this vector. So for instance, this vector, this vertex x has a label gamma x. And for instance, if y is in the vh, and gamma x times, uh, gamma x times m times, gamma h y transpose is one and then x actually by the definition x and y will be uh, adjacent in the merged graph right so this function are exactly saying that the v h are adjacent or not for the vertices labeled by this comma x and this c then this operation is the Actually, you pivot the. It's like a pivoting the x y on the right, the merged graph. Actually, same as the these things on the right hand side. Oh, can I see? Yeah. That? Okay. So, so this is uh, follows from the definition of the pivot. So. Um, Maybe I can go prove. So here, the, so after pivoting, so you so from the original adjacency matrix, you remove, uh, so you multiply two and then uh, remove, uh, subtract and then subtract and do two multiplication. So this is exactly the same as this. Um, so, so uh, where do you describe the edges between two vertices of H? Um, uh, yes. Oh, so, so, that? so that is the MH. So, MH is you just uh, take a uh, graph MH. So, MH is uh, adjacency matrix of H. Oh, I see. So, first take a uh, MH, and then you pivot the this set. It's a sequence of this, yeah. Mm. 
and then actually uh, everything uh, should follow and so actually I can obtain that if vertex is uh, very huge then we have a long sequence of this boundary as labeled graphs and we also define the, some linear s properties and uh, we have uh, similar things with, with s properties on the pathways case and then we follow the, this similar argument and then we can obtain the, this 2 to the 2 to the over p bound Okay, so I have uh, almost time and the uh, application of this result is that actually so we can actually extend into the any finite field of a symmetric or skew symmetric matrices of a finite field and furthermore we can extend uh, some notion of the sym sigma symmetric matrices developed by uh, Kante and Rao so this sigma symmetric matrices generalize the all symmetric matrix and the skew symmetric matrix so sigma has uh, some function uh, it satisfies the involution and uh, it has uh, some it satisfies uh, some another things then uh, this sigma is the uh, identity and uh, minus one is uh, always a sigma uh, uh, as the can be taken as a sigma and then they define a notion of the f pivot minor of the sigma symmetric matrix and then uh, we have the uh, same result on the, this f linear rank is on the sigma symmetric matrix over the field f and then this bound is uh, by uh, this uh, order of the f times uh, over f of, uh, order of the f over the o of k so because graph is taken by a binary field this is a 2 to the 2 to the o of k and the nice thing is that actually we can extend into the f representable matrix where the f is a finite field so so this is a from the result by UM, uh, connections between the F rep representative matrix with the skew symmetric matrix of the F when F is a bi uh, finite field. And then from the, our result on the sigma symmetric matrix, is we obtain that uh, for each minor obstruction for the, this matrix, the, the, the size is bounded by the uh, same number. And actually, Heloni showed that uh, so for fixed F representable matroid M, so there exists a cubic time algorithm to test whether a given matroid of a bounded branch with, with a given vector representation contains the uh, contains the this or not. And then using this theorem, then I can say that for fixed k, there exists a polynom polynomial time algorithm test to whether a representable matroid m prime with a given vector representation has a path with m most k or not. And so as a conclusion, so we proved that the bound of this pivot minor obstruction, and then we generalize into the matrices of the finite field. And theoretically, since we know the upper bound of the, this uh, site, so you starting from the all graphs up to the bound, we can enumerate all pivot minor obstructions. And then after then, it will give an explicit and constructive algorithm for the determining algorithm. And I have a few questions that, so actually using these same tools, Lagrangrand also showed that for any two planar graphs, G and H, so minimal graphs containing both of them as a minor has a bounded site, where here M is a, a maximum of the size of the one of the guys. And so maybe we can do similar things for the vertex minor, hopefully. So this is the whole of my talk. Thank, Thank you. you.